Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books and marketing expert covering Target loses $4 billion in one day as sales tank and stock gets obliterated. Let's get into the story. Before we do, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate you guys. Target stock dropped 8% in one day today. It's down to $143. That's a loss of more than $4 billion in just one day. Almost a year ago to the day from Newsweek, Target loses $4 billion in less than a week as stock price continues to slide. Of course, the thing tanking Target last year was the problem of them pushing their pride displays in all of their stores. If you went into Target stores, you were exposed to their agenda during Pride Month to normalize anything and everything to do with Pride Month. That was the purpose of the displays. They knew they weren't going to be making big money on them. It was their agenda to normalize propaganda during Pride Month. That is not something a retail store is supposed to do. Retail stores have a very difficult job. They have a lot of competition. Target competes with Walmart. Target competes with Amazon. Those are just the big companies they compete with. They also have a relationship with their customers. They've been in business a long time. Customers don't need that. They don't need obvious propaganda when they go to buy things at a local store. The purpose of their relationship with Target is to have a place that as a customer, you know, will have probably what you want at a decent price, at good quality. Generally speaking, the quality of items at Target is better, for example, than the quality of items at Walmart. And they might be a little bit more expensive, but it's worth it because the quality's there. If you're going to spend $15 on an item at Walmart, but you spend $18 on it and it's going to last longer because you got it at Target, it's worth it. That kind of relationship with the customer is what Target spent years and years and years building and actually had in place. But their management decided instead of relying on the relationship with the customer, giving customers what they want, they would push an agenda. And now a year later, their stock is tanking. Again, their sales are off for the fourth quarter in a row. Over the last 12 months, their sales have declined quarter after quarter after quarter after quarter. From the Wall Street Journal, Target reports another sales drop, but says sales growth in sight. Says sales growth in sight. Walmart's actually doing well from zero hedge. Walmart soars to record high after beating estimates, guiding higher as consumers trade down. Aside from the normal competitiveness of being in a business where what you're selling is something that a lot of times other people sell too, Target is dealing with massive retail theft. They're dealing with inflation problems. They didn't create the inflation problem, but it doesn't matter if you created the inflation problem. It matters that you have to actually deal with it. You have to focus on it. You have to think about it and say, hey, what are we going to do to let our customers know we can take care of them? We know they're stressed. Well, finally, Target started to do a couple of things. In February of this year, they created a cheap in-store brand with multiple lines of items that were more affordable. And that brand is called Dealworthy. If they had spent half as much time on Dealworthy and building out Dealworthy for an inflation environment that they knew their customers were going to suffer through, they may not have had a sales drop at all. Their stock might not be down at all because they'd actually have things people would want. You know, they had 2,000 different items when it came to Pride Month, 2,000 different SKUs. They also had it in just about every store. The coordination to do something like that is a massive effort. Is that something their customers were ever really asking for? Or is that something they just wanted to push on society? Look at this deal-worthy concept. It's a good concept. Target launching a new budget brand for clothes, electronics, beauty products, and home items. The range includes undergarments, toothbrushes, and dish soap. Most of the items will be under $10. Target execs said in November that shoppers were having to make trade-offs and cut back on discretionary spending. But that shouldn't be something they're talking about in November of 2023. This is something every major retail business at least was very well aware of and seeing impact their businesses on a day-to-day -day basis because it impacts the customers. If it impacts the customer, it impacts the business. This doesn't impact the business in a positive way, the LGBT stuff. That was completely unnecessary for them to do. 
if they wanted to do some kind of a small section in their store, maybe give out some free books. I don't know. I don't think they should be doing that either. But don't make it the focus of your business because this is what happens when you do. And from CNBC, Target share slide is consumers buy fewer groceries and home goods. Apparently, they will buy groceries and home goods from Walmart, but they don't want to buy them from Target. Target's fiscal first quarter earnings missed estimates as its sales fell about 3% year over year. Walmarts were up over 6% year over year. The retailer saw consumers buy fewer everyday items like groceries and paper towels, along with discretionary goods like apparel and home decor. Who doesn't buy paper towels even when times are tight? CEO Brian Cornell said the results show continued soft trends in discretionary categories. Are paper towels and groceries really discretionary to you? I mean, you do have to eat and you do have to wipe up messes. The CEO said the company wants to make sure it offers customers value and communicates that in a clear way with moves like its relaunched loyalty program. Target also announced Monday it was cutting prices on thousands of everyday items, including milk, bread, paper towels, and diapers. Cutting prices on everyday items is a great idea. Why not cut prices on everyday items? If you can't sell them, you may as well lower the price, especially because if you go there and you're buying your paper towels and your groceries and your diapers and whatever your main things are, maybe you like milk. If those prices are high, all the other items that you're going to potentially buy, you're not going to buy because you're going to buy them at Walmart with everything else that's priced low. But why have they finally figured this? It's May now. This problem emerged at least last year, if not the year prior to that. Now they're making plans and now they're making announcements because the sales are tanking because their focus on everything else other than their business is ruining their stock. Target stuck with its prior full year forecast saying it expects comparable sales will range from flat up to 2% and adjusted earnings per share will be $8.60 to $9.60. Company leaders said the retailer is on track to return to sales growth in the second quarter. Shares of the company are now down 8%, representing a loss of over $4 billion. These results mark the first time since November 2022 that Target missed earnings expectations. Target's total revenue declined about 3% from $25.3.2 billion in the prior year. Like other retailers, Target has tried to win over consumers who are not spending as freely on clothing, home goods, or other discretionary items. The cheap chic retailer has been particularly hurt by this dynamic because it gets less of its sales from food than rival Walmart, which draws about 60% of its U.S. sales from groceries. That compares with roughly 20% at Target. But strangely, people aren't even buying groceries from Target, according to the CEO. I'm sure they're buying some but they're not buying what they used to buy. So Target isn't even maintaining that 20% of its sales that it already had. Inflation cooled slightly in April, but the consumer price index was still up 3.4% on a year over year basis. And of course, inflation just keeps adding up as an additional expense every year, every year, every year, to the point where your inflation on your prices of consumer items are up like 30% to 50%. You may have an inflation rate of 3% or 4%, but it doesn't count the accumulation of the excessive inflation year after year. That's absolutely killing people, destroying their purchasing power. Walmart's figured out a way to benefit from that. Target has figured out a way to get LGBT people to be angry at them because they pulled back on their pride displays. That's what Target accomplished. See, this was from last year. From Newsweek, LGBT organizations give Target a list of demands amid the Target boycott. They were absolutely furious at Target because Target realized, oh my God, we're actually upsetting almost all of our customers with this excessive propaganda merchandise nonsense. At the same time, they weren't dealing with retail theft. They weren't dealing with rolling out Dealworthy, their low-priced brand. They weren't dealing with figuring out how they were going to switch away from such a focus on discretionary items or what they could possibly do to mitigate the problem. All they could do was try to convince their customers Hey, you should really take another look at this LGBT thing. It might be for you. Maybe it's for your kids. Let us expose you to it as much as we can at our retail stores. Of course, customers weren't happy with that. Target acknowledged the challenge with inflation with this week's price cuts. These massive cuts on 5,000 items to try to lure back inflation-weary shoppers. Unless their prices are substantially beneath the other stores that people are now buying merchandise at, why would you be lured back to going to Target? They haven't figured that out yet. 
Maybe they'll start thinking about that next year after they've lost another $4 billion. Target also competes with other discounters, including Walmart and Aldi, that are chasing deal-hunting shoppers. Walmart, for example, has gained market share from higher-income shoppers and recently introduced a premium food brand with most items under $5. The company's CFO, John David Rainey, also said last week that customers are turning to its grocery aisles for cheaper meals because of the rising prices of fast food. People are actually buying more groceries now because they can't afford fast food. That's how bad the economy is, and Walmart is set up to benefit from it. Couldn't Target benefit from the same thing? Aren't they able to essentially do a lot of the same things that Walmart can do? Yes, of course Target could be doing that, but they'd have to be focused on doing that. Target still has sales challenges. In Target's first quarter, customer traffic, which includes online and stores, fell 1.9%. The average amount the customer spent on those visits dropped 1.9% too. Digital sales grew 1.4%. It marked the first increase in digital sales in more than a year. Comparable sales, also called same-store sales, tumbled 3.7% as shoppers bought beauty items but less of other discretionary categories like apparel and home. Discretionary merchandise wasn't the only part of the store under pressure. Sales in frequency categories, food and beverage and beauty and household essentials, declined by low single digits according to Target's Chief Growth Officer, Christina Hennington. Still, Hennington said that Target is seeing some encouraging trends compared with recent quarters. Sales of apparel improved by nearly four percentage points from the fiscal fourth quarter as customers bought outfits for spring. She said Target's limited time collection with Diane von Fostenberg drove millions of unique visits to the retailer's website each day of the launch week and lifted the size of customers' baskets by around 15% on average. Well, that sounds great. Why don't you focus on more things like that instead of nonsense merchandise that nobody wants? Other unique items also drove spending, she said. They included its partnership with tennis lifestyle brand Prince to sell pickleball gear and Taylor Swift's latest album, which Target capitalized on with in-store events and photo ops. When Target does focus on its business, whether it's Diane von Fostenberg joint ventures or some special deal with Taylor Swift's album or whatever else they can come up with, they can do just fine, but they do need to actually focus on it. At least this year, they've said they're cutting way back on ridiculous pride displays. And what I mean by ridiculous, if they wanna have a small pride display, I don't even care about that. What I do care about is you can't make it a featured part of the store as if it was for the 4th of July or for Christmas, because we know it's not a major national holiday. You can't pretend it is and not offend and freak out your customers. And also, even if you just went like three times too crazy with the Halloween displays, you could do that too. You're not gonna sell the merchandise. It's one thing to offend the customers and they did that. But it's another thing to just, will you stock things that people actually want? And I won't be doing a story like once every year that you lost $4 billion in stock in a day or a week or something like that. They know how to do it. They're just not focused on it. But they are rolling back the LGBT pride displays this year. From the Associated Press, Target to reduce number of stores carrying pride-themed merchandise after last year's backlash. Target confirmed that it won't carry Pride Month merchandise at all stores in June after the discount retailer experienced the backlash and lower sales over its collection honoring LGBT communities. Target, which operates roughly 2,000 stores, said decisions about where to stock Pride-themed products, including adult apparel, home goods, foods and beverages would be based on guest insights and consumer research. All you have to do is survey your customers. The cost of that is pretty much almost nothing. And I'm sure they're already doing it anyway. If you ask your customers what they want, they'll tell you what they want. Give them what they want. If they want this merchandise, great. If they don't want it, stop trying to force it on them and on their children. A Target spokesperson declined to disclose the number of stores where the merchandise will not be available, but the company said its online shop would offer a full assortment. Quote, Target is committed to supporting the LGBT community during Pride Month and all year round, Target said in an email statement. Most importantly, we want to create a welcoming and supportive environment for our LGBT team members, which reflects our culture of care for the over 400,000 people who work at Target. You always should respect your employees, create a comfortable and safe place for your employees to work. Your customers always have to come first and then you can also create an environment where your employees are comfortable serving those customers. But it is always customers first, or it's out of business eventually. Kelly Robinson, president of the LGBT advocacy group Human Rights Campaign, said Target's decision was disappointing. 
and risks alienating LGBT individuals and allies at the risk of not only profits, but also their values. But pride merchandise means something, Robinson said. LGBT people are in every zip code in this country, and we aren't going anywhere. No one's trying to send you anywhere, Kelly. But you can't just focus on alienating a whole majority group of people to try to promote the interests of a minority group of people in a store. That, that's not what stores are for. And trying to take over the store and normalize that doesn't make it normal. It's anything but normal. And now Target's even getting another backlash because of this year. They're not dedicating enough of their store to celebrate Pride Month to keep these people happy. From Newsweek, Target hit with backlash for decision on LGBT merchandise. Target is once again in hot water over its handling of LGBT merchandise. The company announced Thursday that it will only offer its Pride Month collection online and in select stores. The move comes after Target faced criticism and calls for boycotts from normal people last year over its related merchandise during Pride celebrations and into the holiday season. Advocates and organizations asking stores and businesses to turn themselves over to promote some kind of progressive agenda is completely ridiculous and inappropriate. That's not the place for a store. A store is there to serve their customers. To say, sure, but we're certain customers and we don't feel served enough. Well, they're not trying to serve every customer at the level of service that every customer expects they individually want. There has to be a standard of service that's acceptable for normal people that makes some minor exceptions for minority interests. That's what major stores have always done. That's what Walmart is still doing. And that's what's expected from these businesses. Let me know what you think of all this in the comments below. Always love to see your ideas. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you again soon with another story. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.